Hello, I am Jessica Patterson and I work alongside Kate Tucker here at Root and & Vine. And I'm just so excited to be able to host Reasons to Hope today. Um, today we have a very special guest joining us, hailing from the state of Indiana where I am from. Um, she is a beautiful soul inside and out. I'm honored to call her my friend. We met while we were both working as professional vocalists in the Indianapolis area. Um, several years ago, and we have just watched each other grow and experience life as friends do. The ups and the downs, living out Romans 12, 15, rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Um, today, I could not be more excited to welcome my friend, Julianne Hess. So we'll get Julian, Julianne in here in just a second. And we are going to have a wonderful conversation today talking about her journey in motherhood. As soon as we get her on here, please. Okay. Julianne. And we'll just give her another second here. There we go. Yay! It works! Hi! <laughs> hey, how are you, beautiful friends? I'm so great. I'm so excited to do this. Thank you so much for being willing to just come share your story. Absolutely. It's my honor, and it's so great to see your beautiful face. Oh, I miss you. I miss you, too. <laughs> so let's jump into it. Let's talk about, we're going to talk about motherhood today. We're going to talk yeah. about specifically just your journey in motherhood. Um, sure. with well, I think, like, I... Yeah, like a lot of women, uh, it came time where I really just desired to be a mom. And so I thought it was as simple as just saying, okay, it's my time. Here we go. And um, sadly, it wasn't. Through the process, I've learned a lot about myself, a lot about the people in my life that I love. Um, but yeah, for me, um, I, have, I have two daughters. Um, my oldest is eight, and prior to her being born, I had a miscarriage, and then Ivy was born in 2013, my little miracle, and then um, after that, I became pregnant again in 2016 and suffered another loss, so it's just been a, an up and down journey, but I am proud to say today I have two beautiful baby girls. And, and how has your journey impacted how you experience gratitude? What, is, what has changed for you? Yeah, I think um, one of the biggest things with gratitude is I feel like that's sort of my center point when it comes to prayer. I feel like the prayers of pleading come naturally. So for those moms out there that want babies so bad, um, that's a natural prayer to wake up. And in every moment you see that sadness, you just yearn and pray for that. But to find a way to shift um, to a prayer of gratitude and just being grateful and thankful for what you have in every single day. And it's not something I've perfected by any means, but um, I certainly work at it every day. And tell us a little bit about your recent addition and just the process of, of finding out what that journey was going to be. Sure. Um, mercy. It's something I could have never scripted in a million years. <laughs> Um, after Ivy was born, we found out in 2016 that we were pregnant again, which was a surprise because we really did think after the miscarriage and having our first that that was it for us. And so when we found out we were pregnant, we're like, okay, that's, that's a, a really awesome thing. Um, but shortly after uh, my pregnancy, well, I, I was pregnant for a little while, um, I suffered what's called an ectopic pregnancy. And I didn't know at the time I was still rejoicing and being pregnant. And you know how it is, picking out all the new stuff and just thinking, here I am going to be a, a mom again. And um, it was in an afternoon, and I just had an incredible amount of pain and was rushed to the hospital and realized in those few moments of emergency surgery that not only had it been an ectopic pregnancy, but that um, my fallopian tube had ruptured and had caused a significant amount of internal bleeding. And so the doctors were able to treat that, but in the process of that, they removed obviously the fallopian tube that had been affected. And then the other one they said was so full of scar tissue that it was basically dead and there was no way that it would ever be um, something that could function again. And so I left that hospital with an enormous amount of grief, having lost a child, and an enormous amount of grief for the loss of any future child, because I knew at that moment um, that was just never gonna be a part of our lives. So um, fast forward uh, several years, and obviously my husband and I had 
become very accustomed to our new normal and felt that our family was complete. Um, but we had a little surprise a little over a year ago now, I guess. Um, I, we were on vacation and you're supposed to be having the time of your life. I felt so sick. I was so tired. I was not able to look at food. I was just like every possible symptom of pregnancy, but we knew I'm not pregnant. Right. And in truth, I thought it was menopause because <laughs> like, <laughs> what is going on? So then I'm freaking out about, you know, what that means for life. But I think once, you know, we got out the calendar and started really processing, it was like, oh my word, I think we might be pregnant. And we, you know, obviously did a pregnancy test. I sat in my doctor's office and said, what in the world? Why am I here? He had no explanation for why I was there, which I think is the real mystery and beauty and magic of it all. And um, so there you have it. We were pregnant. And so I, at 42 years old, had a baby. It was not at all my timeline. We have um, two older boys, 19, 16, Ivy's eight, and now a baby. So we've got the spread of 19 to zero. We're going to raise children for 40 years. Everything about it was not what we imagined, but it has been the greatest story and the greatest testament that no matter what we have planned for ourselves, there's something greater out there. And Jovi just turned one last week. So she's a beautiful baby girl and we're, we're thrilled. And now our family is complete. We are done. Yeah, it really brings up that Isaiah 60, 22 verse of at the right time, I will make okay. it happen, which is, is such a difficult one to process sometimes. But I'm sure in this time of, of having your whole world change so, so quickly, it really speaks to that moment. It really does. And it's just truth that there's something so much greater and so much bigger. And it's hard to hold on to that, you know, when you're in those moments of just desperation and, and wanting things to happen in our time. I've been in that spot so often. So all of us have. Um, but in being able to kind of look backwards and say, here's a perfect example that I have in my life of where things worked out in his time is really all the hope I need leading forward, you know, to just hang on to, to the goodness in the world. And, and what is something giving you hope now? Oh, gosh. Um, well, giving me hope is my kids because they say and do and are amazing human beings. And so that is hope for future. And then I think hope for me and for my life, because it's not like everything's rosy from here on out. You know, every day has some type of challenge. But I think as often as I'm able I can hang on to the hope that uh, there's mystery in all of it and that um, hindsight truly is 2020. And when you can look backwards and see, okay, there was purpose in that pain, there is gratitude in that grief and um, being able to hang on to those things, I think is what gives me the greatest hope and the greatest joy. And have you found a new normal now with... <laughs> with a little person as a mom of a two-year-old I am you know yeah really <laughs> yeah it's no there is no normal normal yeah. is not normal but um <laughs> yeah you know I think one of the coolest things is you know obviously I was a mom eight years ago and when you know the days were long what do they say the days are long the years are short and I can remember with Ivy just there were days I just couldn't wait for my husband to get home and I was just you know every moment I'm like is, is this the new normal will I never sleep again I think now with Jovi and at this age and season of life I know it's all temporary and that in a flash she'll be grown and graduated and every day yeah it feels long but i have such joy in that um so that's my new normal is just every day is different what are we gonna do today and see how it's gonna <laughs> where it's gonna take us <laughs> yeah and do you have any words of hope that you want to send to any moms that are have are in a similar journey that you have walked Sure. Um, well, first of all, you're not alone. I mean, not just me. I think, um, you know, so many women have suffered the grief of miscarriage and um, it's not something talked about a whole lot. For me, I found healing in talking about it and sharing my story. Um, for others, I know that's, that they don't receive, you know, the same kind of healing through that. Um, but I think the, you know, being able to talk and to pray and to hope with other women is huge. Um, also, in that time of waiting and in desperation, you know, like I mentioned earlier, I think prayers of desperation come natural. But shifting that into prayers of just gratitude for what is 
is huge. And then um, investing in yourself and in friendships. I think the more we can surround ourselves with just good people who breathe life into us and investing in ourselves with exercise. And I do jazzercise six days a week and it's with <laughs> my best friends in the whole world. And it's one hour of just, you know, dancing from everything to pit bulls, <laughs> you know, we're just, we're goofy and, and we're healthy and we love it. So just investing in good friendships, good relationships, good healthy practices, and then just, you know, keep, keep praying and keep the faith that, you know, God has a bigger plan for all of us. And actually speaking of speaking life into others, you know, I don't know if you remember this, but you've written me notes a few times over the years. And I remember when I had my little guy a couple years ago, yeah. you sent me a note right at the beginning. And we're like, I just want you to know that, you know, you'll be really exhausted now, but the best days are to come. The best oh, yet to come. You sent that to me. Yeah. And I kept it. I still have it. And it was just so uplifting to have that kind of, oh. that kind of strength, that kind of woman that says that, that speaks to you that even when you don't reach out, knows that you might need something. Um, oh, it's to me, that does get better and better, doesn't it? It really does. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, now it's, I love you, mommy. I love you, mommy. Yes. I just smell, I'm like, you can have a pony, you know. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. And then before, we just have a few more minutes, but I just want to ask too, was there a song of hope? We have a playlist here at Root and Vine on Spotify where we're oh, wow. okay. these songs of hope. Was there a song of hope that carried you through this period? Okay, there was actually. Um, the song, It Is Well, it's Bethel music. Um, oh, I love it's it. It's a, a praise and worship song, yeah. That song, so the morning we realized we were pregnant, we were on vacation and, and um, I walked out of the room, it was like five in the morning because of course I couldn't sleep. And I just put my, my headphones on and just walked and listened and that song came on and I played it on repeat and repeat and repeat. And there's something about uh, the line I think is grander earth has quaked before. And I think that is, I have goosebumps talking about it right now, yes. but I just played that song over and over and listening to that and staring out at the ocean and just knowing this problem is not the biggest problem God has ever been presented. Bigger, grander things have quaked before and the waves and the wind still know his name. Mm -hmm. And, and I just, I just know that, you know, he, he's there and he's present. And, and I just, I held on to that as li a life verse, a life song on repeat over and over and over. So yeah, that's, that's my song. That's my go-to. Yeah, the second verse to that, I think is far be it for me to not believe, even oh. if my eyes can't see. Yep. And there's a Michael Bernard Beckwith quote where he says, we don't believe what we see, we see what we believe. Oh. And you kind of have to say that a couple of times, mm -hmm. but when you really think about it, we, we don't believe what we see, we see what we believe. That's and, right. and when you hear those words over and far be it for me to not believe, even that's when right. my eyes can't see, that's some, I, I carry that with me all the time. It's so good. It's so good. Well, I am so glad that we were able to do this. We will also be sharing your journey. Um, I wrote a story about it and we'll be posting that <laughs> this week too. I'm just honored to be able to share it. Um, so everyone make sure that you go and follow Julianne on Instagram and Facebook and also check out Living Proof Music. Yes, <laughs> which is yeah, fun fact. But that's actually a band that I started with my husband now, my yeah. best friend then. Um, it was just this little idea that we had way back in 2002. And now Julianne is at the helm of that still keeping it going. Uh -huh. And it just brings my heart so much joy. To think yeah, you know, it's, it's such a joy for me, but I do carry that responsibility because what you two created was beautiful. And it's not just a band, it's not just music, it's hope. And we always say that we're living proof that people love one another and that we stand on stage and we, we get along and we spread love and spread peace. And you created that and we don't, we don't hold that lightly. So I love you both so much uh, and I'm, I'm honored. <laughs> I have all the feels right now. Um, so we just wanna, I wanna close real quickly and just thank everyone for joining today. Um, make sure you join us again next week for another conversation on Reasons to Hope. And until then, drop a comment. Um, let us know what your reason of hope is this week and anything that resonated with our conversation today and just where grace has found you, where maybe you, there wasn't a visible way, that it didn't appear there was going to be a way and grace found you. So if you have one of those stories, we would love to just be this uplifting community. We love to encourage one another. Uh, I want to give a couple shout outs to Tim Hensley, 
to Tammy Ellen Hay, to Janice Davis, um, Bailey Ballinger, Mike Anderson, Val Bergwine. Um, just thank you so much for being that community that encourages one another this past week. You shared your reasons to hope. So anyone else, we would love to, to be there as a community, um, sharing, our, sharing what we go through and just sharing the journey. So use reasons to hope as your hashtag, and we will see you all again next week. Bye.